Thank you for doing that introduction. Um, so I will start with, um, I guess, a little bit of an introduction for me. I don't know a lot of people in this room. Um, so I'm Leah Davis. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at CellGP. Um, hopefully everyone in the room knows what CellGP is, but I'm, I'm going to explain it briefly for those of you who don't. So we, we believe we're the most exciting racing on water. We're these hydrofoiling, 50-foot flying catamarans that race through the sea. We're very close to shore. Um, we're 10 nations, 13 cities. Um, and we basically travel around the world. We're a racing on water circuit, and it's a fairly new proposition, but it's something that's going incredibly well. We're not your average sailing competition. I think one of the key points for us is that we very much do use data in terms of enhancing performance, but also very much as an entertainment tool. So it's, you know, it's an interesting way to build a modern sports brand that allows you to actually consider how you want to use data. And I guess that's our interpretation of that, but it's a good segue into some of our conversations here today as well. So I'm going to start with um, Alessandro. Um, very quick intro, 18 years experience in sales and marketing across financial services, tech, publishing, and e-commerce. Past roles at Google, Microsoft, and eBay, and currently heading up the paid media for everything at HSBC. Main goals of driving online sales and advancing the digital maturity of the business. No small feat there. Um, and personally, just very passionate about everything that sits at the intersection of media, data, and tech. Alessandro, I'm going to come to you in a second. Um, Jay, to give you equal billing on this panel. Um, Jay is currently working as, um, as a controller of advanced advertising at ITV, which involves defining and deploying ITV's advertising strategy to meet IV, uh, ITVX's revenue targets. So very friendly with Craig, who was on the panel earlier on, no doubt. Yeah. Um, Jay also led and launched ITV Ad Labs, which I think is a really interesting area for us to discuss in a bit more detail today. The goal there is to stay at the forefront of advertising and innovation and provide advertisers with solutions to meet their evolving needs in a rapidly changing media landscape. So, no small feat. Jay, I'll start with you if that's all right. Talk to us a little bit about ITV Ad Labs and what do you feel gives you the edge over competitors? Was that from my LinkedIn? <laughs> Possibly. Uh. Wow. Um, so we launched Ad Labs. Uh, I lose track of the days now and the months. Um, about two years ago, um, and it, it was born really as 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 a concept out of the realization that, as a business, we knew we were innovating more and more, but we were just very bad at talking about it. We were very bad at packaging it, and we we wanted a platform that would give us um, a more confident place to be talking to customers about the way we're innovating and an entirely new set of behaviors around innovation that we were building. What we built when we built Planet V, we, we effectively built a tech business within ITV. Tech businesses are always in beta, as you all know. Um, ITV, when it came to innovation, we weren't there. Um, we weren't building MVPs, working with partners, working with tech vendors, working with customers on, on pilots, um, on sandbox, sandbox concepts. Um, and that shift in body language um, was really manifest through AdLabs. Um, what it also did was give us a point of view on all aspects of innovation. So we very quickly um, spun out um, AdLabs from just being about addressable to being all things measurement. We have a 12 strong measurement innovation team who also productionize solutions through Ad Labs. Um, and we also talk about content partnership innovations through Ad Labs as well. Fantastic. Thank you. Good introduction there. Um, Alessandro, if I can go to you as well. Um, talk me through in your role and what you do, how do you feel the role of data and measurement has evolved in recent years? Yeah, that's, that's a very good question, an interesting journey, I would say, for data uh, in, in time. Like, if I think about um, marketing traditionally, advertising specifically, like, um, um, I can think about uh, brand advertising and performance advertising to keep, like, uh, things simple. Let's say two categories that we always use, uh, although we could have a debate if that's actually right to do that or not. But those two categories have been uh, traditionally measured in a very different way. Traditional advertising, top of the funnel, TV, traditional TV, all probabilistic, panel-based, uh, 
That's like you know, the way you measure TV and uh, top of the funnel in general. Digital marketing or performance marketing, super deterministic. Everything is click, 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 view. Uh, we had the illusion for a year that we could actually track everything in a deterministic way, which was kind of an illusion, but it was true to a certain extent. Uh, moving forward, uh, the, those categories and the way we are actually measuring are becoming more blurry, uh, a lot more. Uh, think about it like, I mean, ITVX is probably a, a great example. Like, um, you're moving to deterministic in a way because you have much more data you can use. You can, uh, you can actually track more uh, in real time and in a deterministic way what your users are doing, your, your customers are doing. Uh, at the same time, like uh, traditional performance marketing, uh, is moving towards probabilistic in a way because of the loss of signals um, uh, that is caused by like you know changes in uh, how platforms are working like uh, Apple, uh, Google, uh, and um, and also like changes in regulation and uh, all the data privacy uh, let's say challenges that each one probably in this room like has been facing in the last few years. So those categories and the way we measure uh, and we use data has become much more blurry, which is in a way I think a good thing because. Um, we are also, let's say, moving to a world where we, we overcome this false dichotomy, which is like a brand is on one side and performance on the other side. Because at the end of the day, we are talking to consumers uh, or businesses, depending if you're a B2B or B2C business. Uh, and uh, what we want to do is to, to have the best possible media mix uh, to, to actually catch the attention and be top of mind for those uh, uh, users that are at the, uh, on the other side. So let's say a challenge, but a good one that could actually bring like uh, positive things to the industry overall. Fantastic, thank you. And I think if I can follow up with a question on that, because HSBC, as we all know, is you know one of the biggest advertisers in in this market and, and globally. So presumably, you know, and from our conversations over the last week or so, um, you very much are that uh, sitting at that really sharp end of you know data innovation and how to optimize and how to ensure that every dollar spent is spent effectively. What do you think are some barriers that generalist marketeers face in that in, in this kind of ever emerging area? Yeah, I think there are mainly three, three, three things like to take, to take into consideration and uh, barriers or challenges and opportunities again, like, and, um, and I briefly touched uh, uh, initially on this, like, uh, I would say the first one is like, uh, and, and probably the most important is regulation. So again, data privacy and the fact that actually, uh, let's say post GDPR in Europe, but I know like uh, globally, like uh, other countries are moving to, to similar kind of restrictions. Uh, like uh, I guess like in the US, uh, California is probably on the forefront of this. Like uh, there is a lot going on also like in Middle East and Asia. Uh, but the direction of travel is to, to be more and more strict, let's say with, with the way companies are allowed to use data. And again, like that's, that's a positive thing on one side, but has like some, some challenges coming with it. Uh, the second one is um, uh, platforms uh, restrictions. Uh, Apple, Google, uh, ATT, ITP, I don't know how much people in the room are familiar with all these uh, acronyms, but there are all uh, like uh, restrictions uh, to the way that companies, advertisers can measure actually and uh, pinpoint uh, in a deterministic way uh, user level uh, measurement uh, is going to go away. It's already gone, let's say for 50 or 60%, but will go away. The mice of third party cookies, something else that probably everyone heard about for ages and uh, maybe at some point will come. <laughs> we don't know, but uh, it should be probably 2025 now. Um, so this is the second, second big, big uh, challenge. So being able to cope with this and, and build for the future uh, and a future that doesn't have this kind of uh, user level tracking is very important. Uh, third uh, uh, challenge, uh, and again opportunity, is like uh, the, the overall uh, consumer sentiment. Because people are much more aware now of uh, data. And, uh, and I think it's important to, to, to make a difference. Uh, people are aware of data and uh, they know that data, their data is important. Uh, but they don't have like uh, knowledge of data. They are not educated on data. So if you ask probably, every random person, they will have like, a, a, they will tell you like, a, yeah, I know my data is important uh, and I care about my data, but how does data is used and uh, what kind of value exchange you can get like giving your data to like a, an advertiser or third party in general. 
uh, and what do you get in exchange? Uh, that's something that, that very few people know, probably even in this room, even in the industry, like uh, the, the level of knowledge uh, it is still very low. So, uh, and that's for a reason, because it is a very complex uh, space, a very complex topic. It's not easy to grasp. Uh, and I don't think it's something that like, uh, can, be, can be fixed like in, uh, let's say in, uh, in a week, a month, or, a, or even a year and from a single advertiser, uh, for sure. But it's something that we have to keep in mind and probably, like, uh, overall, as a society, we need to make sure that at some point uh, we start to do something about uh, data education, as we did in the past with financial education, for example, like to, to mention something that is close to me. Uh, that's definitely, like, uh, another challenge and opportunities. Yeah, and I think, unsurprisingly, it didn't take long for us to get into data privacy and security, which is clearly a, a hot topic on everyone's list. So, Jay, you're going to give us the answer here on data privacy. Um, talk us through, I mean, in your role, Jay, you've got a you know, very different role to Alessandro as well, but how can marketeers ensure that they're using data and measurement um, ethically and responsibly while still really trying to push boundaries on growth and innovation? Look, I think... Um we, we, we as a business, um, we, we, we're a major holder of data and we're looking to deploy that in a number of different ways. So really when, when, we think, when we're thinking about talking to our customers about using data, using their customer data ethically, we have to look at ourselves first. Mm. Um, we, we look at, we look at um, the, 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 the lines and levels of regulation, internal due diligence, uh, and best practice within our own organizations to how we, we are custodians of our viewer data. We have 40 million registered users. Uh, what, what we do with that data, how we utilize it for targeting is really, really important. Um, and it's really important that transparency that, that we, we have with our, our viewers as to what we do with that data. And all we, all we talk to our customers about, those customers that want to activate their data on our platform is exactly the same thing. Be transparent, um, make sure your consents are absolutely aligned and fit for purpose in the modern landscape. Um, yes, activate that in the digital landscape. You can now activate it, and you have been able to activate it with broadcasters for a number of years now. Um, but making sure that, 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 that your consent strings are absolutely fit for purpose and that you are open and honest about, about how and where you're using that data is critical to that value chain. And I'm going to probe you a little bit further on that yeah. because I think that's a really interesting area for a lot of people in this room. In terms of that value exchange, what have you found is delivering your audience and your consumers the best value in terms of that ask? Because 40 million data sets is a huge, I'm sure everyone here would like to send out a few mailings to 40 million people. Yeah. Um, so how do you establish what value exchange you offer? Well, look, we, we, we know who... Are, we, know, we know the volume of that audience that are comfortable with receiving advertising messages um, um, in exchange for free, for free TV. We know that. Yeah. We also know um, the number of our uh, ITVX customers that are happy to pay us for an ad-free experience. We just know that. Um, so when we're talking about value exchange, we, we, we have a good understanding of it when it comes to um, delivering really quality content and what that brings to customers. So much so that we're now talking about that and thinking about that as, to, as, as relates to the, the, the expansion and building of our commerce product set, for example. At what point do our customers feel that they are happy to, for example, engage in commerce experiences with, with, with the market brought to you by ITV? Um, and what, what we've done is we're, building, we, we're gaining confidence in that space um, from our experience of the value exchange in, in, in TV, um, and, we're, and we're, we are now starting to, to, to apply and expand that into commerce. Fantastic. Thank you. Alessandro, let's stay on the same topic for a second, I guess. Very interesting, but different proposition from your point of view. You have a very clear service exchange and, and data requirement from that. How do you add a layer of value exchange to your customers around that when you're talking about data? Yeah, I, I do believe like in, in advertising, like, uh, and I think someone before mentioned something similar, like in, uh, in one of the, the, the panels before, like uh, that, that advertising is not, uh, it's not, necessarily an interruption uh, if it's done properly. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
data is actually the, the, the fuel to, to, to make that engine of uh, proper advertising being done. What I mean, like, uh, if we are able to, to get the data um, and use the data from our customers uh, to identify when and how people uh, are open uh, to a specific message, uh, and if we have the data to, to build the right creative, uh, which can be engaging and not like uh, perceived as an interruption again, but perceived as something like uh, engaging, entertaining, and informative, that's, that's the key of the value exchange. So that's, that's really like the, the sweet spot in a way. Uh, that's easy to say, not easy to, to do, because again, like uh, giving, getting people to understand uh, what do they need to do in order for this value exchange to, to be triggered, uh, it is very complicated. Uh, and at the same time, like um, we have a, a whole, uh, let's say, uh, legacy processes uh, inside like our organization that makes this even more difficult because again, like we are a bank which is by definition a conservative organization for a reason, because you know, we, we deal with like very sensitive data. So we, we need to make sure that each step from uh, say the, the data gathering to the data crunching and the data uh, leveraging and, uh, and activation goes through like the right steps. So that, that's, that's why it's so difficult to, to achieve something that like, uh, to, it's so easy to say, but so difficult to, to achieve. But I think the key point, um, again, is to make sure that like, uh, this value exchange uh, and what needs to be done from a consumer perspective to activate that value exchange gets communicated in a way and and that's clearly like something that can benefit both like uh, companies advertisers and consumers so that should be like uh, again like a, a very very broad uh, movement to make sure that actually this is becoming this becomes uh, common knowledge fantastic um, Jay, back to you. Can you share any examples of brands that have successfully broken barriers and transformed their marketing efforts through data-driven insights and measurement? Um, so um, we, we have a number of products in market, uh, addressable products that, that, that um, um, we've had in place on ITVX for a couple of years now that, that enable the activation of first-party data. Um, and with Data Match, that is the older product of the two that, that, that I want to reference here. Um, we've seen we, we've got about 20, just, just over 20 uh, businesses um, run trial campaigns, and most of them are running repeat campaigns and have built um, the activation and closed loop measurement of the utilization of their data on ITVX as part of their test and learn plans. What's really interesting is the, the array of tactics those advertisers are deploying that, that in my day as an agency folk person, 15, 10, 15 years ago, you'd, you'd have only seen deployed in programmatic. Um, the ability to use, to your point, Ale, um, known deterministic data points for really accurate matching to ITVX users and activation, and then, and then subsequent measurement uh, versus an ITVX exposure is really compelling. Um, and the ability to start using ITVX um, to cross-sell, the ability to use ITVX to upsell, model lookalikes. Um, and what we're seeing from, a, from an array of advertisers, we, we help them with, with closed loop measurement, is some really interesting uh, results. Um, interesting results that are, are changing the, the, the dynamics of what, what, what a short-term response metric should look like versus a long-term. What, what is the role of brand versus performance, to your point? Um, can, can TV live in other parts of the funnel? And, and if so, how? Um, but I think um, perhaps the, 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 the examples of advertisers that I would always go to when, I'm, when, I, when we talk about advertisers that I think are, are really pushing the envelope with the execution of their data you have to look at retailers. I think retailers um, were amongst the first to start utilizing their loyalty card data across our platform for the for smarter execution of their own campaigns. Um, so much so that um, last year we, we, we entered into business partnerships with a couple of them, Boots and Tesco. You'll have seen Kelly talk about that this morning, our matchmaker solution um, 
is, is rooted in partnerships that my team have built with Boots and Tesco to enable suppliers of those retailers, um, who invariably are CPGs, are less data rich inherently, um, to use really accurate, again to that point, deterministic data on shoppers in their category or those that have lapsed from their brand or category. Um, that opportunity is really rich um, and really strong for us. And we, we've been taken by surprise um, at the traction that that, that that solution has gained in market. We're close to 100 campaigns in just under a year. Um, we have, out of that, our own problems now around automation that are good problems to have um, because um, it's, it's scaled at such a rapid pace. Fantastic. Um, Alessandra, I'm going to come back to you. Um, how are we doing for time? We're okay for a few minutes. Um, in your opinion, looking at, I guess, the leaders of tomorrow, what do you think the key skills and competencies that marketers will need to start developing at pace in order to kind of navigate this never-ending minefield of, of data and measurement that we find ourselves in? Yeah, I think uh, the, the skills you need as a marketer to succeed uh, today and in the future like, are, are broadening a lot, actually. Uh, if you think about you know, marketing as like a mix of art and science, uh, as mm -hmm. like usually we, we refer to, I think the, the scientific part uh, is growing and growing and growing. The art part is still, still super important. I mean, you can be a marketeer and be successful if you don't have like a, you know, that creativity and passion uh, and empathy because you, at the end of the day, what we want to do uh, is making sure we understand consumers uh, and we talk their language uh, and we are in tune. So you need that part. But the science part, the scientific part, is getting more and more important. So analytical skills, super important, like some, let's say, a loose understanding of statistics probably is important. And I will add like uh, something that we mentioned uh, quite a few times already, but like an understanding of uh, regulations uh, and uh, laws that actually regulate uh, the, the, the communication advertising space, it's super important because you can have like the best intuition and the best idea to leverage like uh, all this wealth of data that ITV has, HSBC has, but you need to be conscious and mindful that there are like rules that you can't break. And I'm talking about, you know, hard rules and not even ethical uh, <laughs> dilemmas that actually are something to take into consideration as well. But, you know, everyone knows like, uh, you know, fines for GDPR breach are very, very hefty. So mm. that's something that each person working in marketing has to have like uh, some kind of understanding. So I would say, yeah, art still super important, like creativity and passion. Second, uh, analytical skills. And third, very important, like uh, regulatory and uh, you know, some kind of uh, law skills. Let's put it like that. Mm -hmm. it's th I think like, it's good to, for, uh, for the marketing department to build strong relationships uh, with the legal department uh, or departments, depending on the company, <laughs> um, and with the analytical department. Those are the key enablers uh, that will make marketing successful and advertising successful today and in the future. Brilliant. Which is very uh, uh, apt, given the conversation we had during the break. Somebody came over and said, are you a creative type or a data type? And I mean, the answer is, these days, you have to be both. You know, you have to be able to balance the two. Um, Jay, I'm going to finish with you. Um, your world is ever-changing, as are all of ours. But give us a glimpse into what your role could look like in five to ten years down the line. What do you foresee as as the major trends that will change, or at least the areas that we need to be mindful of? Um, so I've, I've dipped in and out of, of, of this, this, this day, and I think one of the pervading themes um, that I've taken from it is, is this, this inevitability that I think we, we're all seeing that, that TV will eventually become entirely ad-served. Um, and we're already putting the building blocks of that eventuality in place right now. We have we have a self-service programmatic platform. 100% of our inventory on ITVX is served programmatically via that via that self-service programmatic platform. We have all the technology in place. We have um, a commercially dedicated tech team of 140 people. That's bigger than most ad tech organisations. So when we, when we look at my team's role, 
the focus of how and where we proliferate, grow and expand our addressable product set, um, you, you can see it doesn't take a genius to join the dots as to where that can go. Um, and, and when we talk about data-driven opportunities, we are, we, are, we are solely in the business of looking at deterministic data opportunities. We're in the business of finding ways that we can use data to influence individuals at a household level, not cohorts, not postcodes. Um, and that opportunity, when you, when you have 40 million lines of your own data, as we have, um, and the footprint um, and the, the, the brand strength that we have, um, it, it, it presents all sorts of opportunities. Um, but as I've mentioned it a couple of times, commerce is going to become really important to us. Um, and all I'll say in that space is look out for some more exciting announcements from us over the coming months. Oh, that's a good one to finish on. <laughs> okay, I think we will wrap up, unless there's any questions from anyone else in the audience. No? All good? All right, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.